Um, have you ever been in Sunday school and they ask a question and they, they call on you and usually you can't go wrong with the, the ultimate Sunday school answer, which is Jesus, right? Jesus. So what do you think is going to happen at the end of time when the seventh seal is open? Jesus? <laughs> you can't, I mean, your teacher can't say that's wrong. Like, well, well, no, but yes, are you saying Jesus is not coming? No, no, I'm, never mind. Yes, Jesus, but I'm asking for another. So I mean, you can never go wrong with the ultimate Sunday school answer, right? When you don't know. When you don't know, you can never go wrong with that, right? And the reality is that it happens in Sunday school. Don't you hate it when you get called on in school and you don't know the answer to something when you get called on? Or when the teacher asks a question and all of a sudden everybody begins to have like an itch on their leg, like look the other way, like, okay, are you? Sure. Huh? Can I go to the bathroom? Like nobody wants to answer the question. Nobody wants to get paid. Why? Why is that? Yes. Good. <laughs> I don't think I would have thought of it because it would be called a humiliation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready for my PhD. Thank you very much. No, you're very smart. I thought it would say like because I don't like people made fun of me. You know, but that's exactly right. That's exactly right. You don't want public humiliation. That flogging. That that sense of like I'm no good, right? Now we we don't want that because we'd be publicly humiliated. And let me tell you something. I was publicly humiliated a lot of times. Math was my worst subject mm. all the time. Mm. Anybody hate math here? Mm. Okay, we got some people going like that about to die in the middle of the school. Like, yeah, I hate math. Um, who loves math here? That's fantastic. That's great. That's great. See, I've always looked up people that can do math. I've always, like, because I mean, it's just, they think in numbers. When they ask me a question, all of a sudden I, 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 I used to go blank, completely blank, and go like, two plus two, Esposito. <laughs> Two plus two by Zeno. Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> no, wrong place for that.
See, the Bible says that there's one thing that will cast out all fear you have. And that is what? Perfect love. Mm -hmm. Perfect love will cast out all your fear. The problem is that we don't know many times how to receive love because we sometimes expect to be loved by everybody else. But everybody else doesn't love like God does. There's only one person who can love perfectly, and that is God. The Bible says that God is love. Though sometimes we want to fit in that we are afraid that we could be rejected because we're not going to get the love of other people, meaning their acceptance, and we're going to make fun of them, they're going to push us away. And every time we look for this, we start doing certain things like this, right? We start putting little things. You know what this stuff is? Anybody? Pedestals. So it's furniture, it's styrofoam, kind of. Right? Really? You know what that is? Pillars? Pillars? Yeah, they're kind of pillars, yeah. Anybody else know what this is? Any of the thoughts? So all of these things, yes, they're pillars. You're absolutely right. Oh, you're right. Yes, I got it. Fantastic. Okay. They are all pillars. See, when we stop accepting love, when we start, when we start looking for loving others, this is what starts happening in our life, right? All of these things begin to get really close to us. And you're wondering, then what is this thing that's getting close to us? Jeremiah, there's a, there's a scripture in the book of Jeremiah that says, and I know the plans I have for you. There are plans to harm, not to harm you. There are plans to give you hope in the future, right? So when you stop believing the love of God and you start looking for the love of others, then little things begin to appear in your life like this. These were things that happened to me. You see, I, I was depending on the love of other people. So I started putting everything in here for me. All right? You say, like, what the heck does that mean? Looks. Looks, right? Yeah. And I started making a lot of different things, like my door blanket. You're like, oh, we're dead. What's going on? You know, I'm going to do that. And I started creating a little home around this place. You see, the Bible says God has plans for you. But when you start to believe and stop believing that God loves you and he has a good plan for you, then you begin to create little barriers, right? The Bible says in the book of Acts, there's a story. And in this story in chapter 7, it has Paul, right? Paul is this guy who helped put the church together. And the Bible says that Paul went to this place called Greece. And when he went to Greece, he began to see all these little altars. And they were altars to different things. They were altars to all sorts of stuff. And he was wondering, he says, well, wait a second, there's a god of the sun, there's an altar to the god of the moon, there's an altar to this, there's an altar to that, there's an altar to all these different things. And then they took him and they brought him to all of these people who were leaders in the community. And he began to, to be say, why are you talking about our altars like there's a problem? He said, because you keep on worshiping these altars. You keep on doing all of these things and putting all of your acceptance and all of your desires on these little altars, right? They worship all sorts of different things. Paul said, all of these things are not God. They're actually stopping you from seeing God. I'm here to talk to you about the unknown God. I'm here to talk to you about the God that you can't see because all of these things are covering, right? And I'm kind of paraphrasing because I want you to understand this. So, in my life, I had a lot of different things that I was afraid of. And I began to create little things and little altars. God said, Danny, I have a plan for you. And I said, God, I don't believe you because I'm hurt. People make fun of me and I don't have anybody that can help me out. So I began to create little altars where I began to look at books. I began to look at my, you know, my shades and the way I looked. And I began to create all these different things, my, my phone and all these different things were important to me, or computer, video games. I had altars to all these different little things. And the more I spent time looking at these things, the closer it got. Every time, my mess began to collapse in on me. 
all of this mess began to collapse in on me. I couldn't move, right? And all I could see was the things I was worshiping, what other people thought about me, okay? My video games, you know, wanting to be with girls, okay? Wanting to hang out and do stuff that I wasn't supposed to do. All of these different things in my life were coming in really close. I'm gonna tell you, can I tell you one more thing before I let you go about how I got rid of this? Anybody wanna hear that? Okay, right, good, good. I'm gonna tell you real quick. There's a story in the Bible, and I'll read it to you really quick in two minutes. So if you have Bibles, you can you know, follow with me. If not, I can just tell you the story really quick. In the Bible, there's a story, and it's in the book of uh, Mark, chapter 11, verse 15 to 17. And I'll paraphrase it so it's easier for you guys. In the book of Mark, Jesus is going into the temple. And the Bible says that when he goes into the temple, what does he see? Yeah. He says, well, he, well, kind of just pillars in the temple. You're right, you're right. What else does he see? What? Right, he sees, he sees these tables, and he sees money changers, and people selling things. And what does Jesus do? He flips that table. He goes straight up nuts, and he starts flipping things all over the place, right? And what does he say to the people out there? In the book of Mark, he says, get out. He gets them out because you've turned this house into a den of thieves, and it's supposed to be a house of prayer for the nations. What does that mean? It means that Jesus came in and he looked at his place, at his house, at his temple, at the place where people came to worship, and he said, people are not seeing me. All they're seeing is money, they're seeing they got this, they're focusing on all the wrong things. So what did he do? He looked at what was there, then he said, this is wrong, and then he kicked it out and moved it away and said, all of this stuff has got to get out of the way if you want to get close to me. You see, this is what I want to leave with you guys tonight. It's very simple. The only way I was able to leave some of these things behind, because I'm still working on my life in some areas, but the only way I was able to move some of this stuff was when I finally started realizing that I had to stop being afraid of what I was thought about. That I had to stop looking for what others in the, in the world and that are not serving Jesus are doing, or my video games, or whatever. The more I did that, the more all of this moved away. And the more I began to realize the love of God and how much he wanted for me. Now, I don't know you tonight, but I want to ask every single person who's probably had to close their eyes before I close them. Because I want to finish with a small one. With every head bowed and every eye closed, the only reason I ask people to do that is not because something magical happens when every, when every head is bowed and every eye is closed. It's because I want you to focus on what I'm about to say to conclude. It's very simple. I don't know who you are here tonight. It's completely unknown to me. But I do know this. You probably heard the scripture many times in Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. There are plans to prosper you and not to harm you. There are plans to give you hope. But what does that matter? If your heart is afraid of what others may say. If your heart is afraid of being left out. If your heart is afraid of tomorrow, the Bible says that all of this can be taken care of if perfect love comes into your heart. Like I told you the story about my son. My son was afraid of being left out. My son was afraid of becoming the butt of every joke. My son began, was believing a lie of the devil that he really was a midget. But the problem was not the actual fact that there's a problem with being midgets. There's midgets out there. The problem was that he thought he was less. And he was afraid of being less for the rest of his life. Until I had a conversation with him and I was able to point him back to where his true worth comes from. People may call you all sorts of names. People may have forgotten you. They may not include you in their groups, and that may hurt your feelings. You may have wanted to see certain things in your life that have still not happened yet. You may be feeling that everybody is passing you by. But I'm here to tell you tonight that every moment that you do that, you create a little altar.
that's not glorifying God. And those altars are getting closer to you and you are not being able to see the perfect love of God. And you begin to worship what other people say about you. You begin to care more about getting the job you want or having the grades you need or being in the class you want, being with the friends you want or the girl or the guy that you like to have or not having the voice that this person has or the musical prowess the other has. And all of these things begin to close up on you. I want you to know that you're worth more than that. And God's intention for you in this wonderful evening is for you to realize one thing. Is that you're not for God. And that He does have a plan. And that He does love you. And that you do matter no matter what anybody else says. But he's waiting for you to push away from all those things and say, God, I want to believe you. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know that you love me. And I'm not going to rely on what others say about me. I want you to show me the way. I don't know what name and what lie you're carrying. But God wants to show you what it's like to be truly loved. much bigger, as John Peter says, that your body gives you credit for. Much greater. Because he's made you. And if you're here tonight and if you're honest with yourself and you're honest with God, I just want to ask you if you feel that you've been kind of squeezed in by all of these lies and all of these things, just raise your hand. 